And now I want to introduce some empirical garden in China. The first one is the Summer Palace. I think who have been there before? Oh, yes, the Summer Palace. It was built uh, in 1715, and then the construction of the garden started to prepare for the birthday of uh, the Emperor Qianlong's mother. Uh, and uh, you can see this hill uh, named is Long Guilty Hill. So it's to celebrate the birthday. And uh, it was listed as a World Heritage in 1998. And uh, it was rewarded as a masterpiece of Chinese landscape garden design. And in Qing Dynasty, during the hot summer, uh, the empirical family will leave the uh, Forbidden City and uh, go to the Summer Palace to stay there for the summer. And uh, there's some the pictures in there. This is a uh, a marble boat in the summer palace, and that is the Suzhou Market, uh, Suzhou Market Street in the summer palace. And this is a very famous bridge, is Seventeen Arch Bridge, and this is a long corridor, and there are many paintings in the beams. Uh, the second one is uh, Beihai Park in Beijing. I think it is the oldest, one of the oldest car, uh, park in Beijing because it has 1,000 years history. And uh, it also the palace of the em emperors in, and uh, it was called the Winter Palace by Westerners. Mm, the Beihai Park is now one of the best of China's classical garden and uh, because it has many the rock works and uh, the temples and uh, uh, you can see there's very beautiful and beautiful thank you. Enjoy. 
sold in Chengde. It's near Beijing. Uh, I think it's in Hebei province. That's a, a yes, near Beijing. And this is another empirical garden. Uh, this garden is uh, used to be result of the empires of Qing dynasty, and uh, it served as a second political center. And uh, surrounded by the lakes and the uh, forest and the mountain, uh, it is very big. I think the, uh, the size is can be the, the summer palace and the forbidden city combined with its uh, whole. It's very very big. And uh, it conducted state of fair hunting, engaging in the important policy, uh, political uh, activities in there. Uh, this is the uh, paintings of this garden. Uh, it also was listed in the uh, World Cultural Heritage. Uh, Heritage. You see, this is the palace area, and uh, there is the lake area, and there is the mountain area. It's quite big. And uh, this is uh, uh, now we will introduce the private garden in north, uh, southern China. It's quite different because the uh, limited size, and uh, those gardens belongs to the princes and uh, the official officers like uh, yes and uh, uh, the, the space is limited uh, but it's very elegant mm. uh, when you go to this garden you will feel where you are you are present with an uh, elegant and uh, different pictures um, it is very different because it always used the uh, dark green titles and the uh, white walls and in the empirical garden is the uh, right, and this is the white walls, and the dark brown or green, greenish black pillars, uh, all blended with the uh, uh, bridges, uh, pavilions, and uh, the corridors will make of the uh, material, uh, metal stone, to use the stone to make it. And the whole scenery uh, presents a peaceful and pleasant atmosphere. You can see like those pictures. Mm. And the white walls is very good. It can uh, serve as a pure back backdrop of the flowers. You can see it like a painting, and the white walls like the paper, and the flowers like the paintings. Mm, this is a garden, the private gardens, some pictures in Suzhou. And the owners, the garden owners were very skillful and clever constructing their private gardens according to their own personal tastes. So each owner will perfect their garden. And uh, this one is a humble administrator's garden. Uh, it also listed as the World Heritage Seat. Mm, the whole garden's feature is in the water center. The water is very big. And, uh, green hills, delicate pavilions, and the lush flowers and trees forms uh, like uh, poetic pictures of the classic uh, in Jiangnan because it's located in Jiangsu province. Mm. There is the, uh, uh, because you can see this pavilion uh, there are many lotus flowers. When people uh, sit or stand in the pavilion, can, uh, when it spreads, and the scent of the lotus will uh, waft it to the hall, and you feel a very good smell in there. And uh, this one is the lingering garden in Suzhou. Uh, it has a history of more than uh, 400 years and uh, each owner of this garden has his best uh, to perfect it. And the garden was first built in the uh, Ming Dynasty uh, by a retired ofi official uh, named is Xu Tai. 
you are quiet. So he he built the gardens very peaceful, like like this, for his retired time, and uh, his friend will go there. They can talking or painting or write some poems. And uh, this is another private garden. <coughs> uh, the name is Lime Grove. There were many uh, rocks in the garden. Uh, you can resemble it like the plants, different plants. And the garden was first, uh, uh, it is uh, uh, It is very um, very good at the, the rock work in there, very famous. And uh, the empirical uh, Empire Qianlong in Qin, Qin Dynasty have been there for six time. So it's very, very beautiful garden. Mm. This is a rock works in there. And uh, this is a pavilion for greeting the plant blossoms in this garden. And uh, it have many uh, plum trees around this garden, and uh, in this uh, in this uh, pavilion, there are many uh, plum paintings and some furniture in there. Uh, you know this architecture? Uh, just uh, yeah, he. He spent his uh, childhood time in this garden, and uh, he also designed the, the Suzhou Museum for there. <coughs> and about the elements and the design method, in Chinese garden there have six elements in there, like the mountain and the rocks, water, architectures, plant, paths, and uh, the ornaments. If we uh, view the garden as a body, and uh, the mountain like the uh, skeleton, and the water like the blood, architectures like the organs, and the plants like the hairs, and uh, the paths like the weaves, and the ornament like our decorations. Uh, I think uh, just, uh, this gentleman asked me if there have the feng shui in Chinese garden. And uh, yes, in the toss 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 means the rock and the water are opposite. It's yin or yang. And uh, uh, they are complement <coughs> and uh, complete one and another. And the water is more refined with the mountain nearby. And the mountain seems more alive with the water nearby. The most uh, interesting rock works in the garden is in uh, Geyuan. It's, uh, it's a Yangzhou. private garden in Yangzhou. Yang Yangzhou, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, the owner, uh, the designer, used four types of the rocks to represent four seasons. Like this, this rock in the is bamboo rock, uh, represents the spring. And uh, this one is the rock with the waterfall. It represents the summer. And uh, this is the yellow rock. It represents the autumn. And the snow rock for the winter. It's and uh, the another one is the element is water. In the Chinese garden, water is very important. It's like the soul or the blood of the whole garden. And uh, it can have the flowing water or standing water. The flowing water, like the river, uh, waterfall, and the springs, or the standing water, like the lake, pond, or pools. Uh, the, the water will uh, present the peaceful, and the, uh, you can uh, listen in the water, listening it, or reflections in the water, like the uh, architectures or plants, the reflections, you can enjoy it. You can see the water waterfall. Mm -hmm. This is the reflections. And some architectures like this one is the uh, 
corridor. And this is a hall and the pavilion. The pavilion in Chinese pronunciation is Q, just uh, uh, the meaning is stop. You can stop here and sit down and uh, enjoy the garden. And the water side pavilion, the, like the tower, is also all is the architectures in Chinese garden. And the architectures always combined with the arts, like the calligraphy or painting. And there also have many uh, the, uh, windows in, on, on the wall like this, have many different shapes and uh, very, very beautiful. It also will have some, uh, uh, like this, the stone tables and uh, some captures. And the bon bon bonsai in the garden. And the, the designer is very clever. If your garden is, the, is limited, it can borrow the sense out of the garden. And uh, the garden will look like very big. Like this, you can see these two towers is outside of the garden, but the designer is very clever to borrow it. It looks like in the garden. And uh, it uh, always people want to give the visitors some surprise of the garden, so they will build like the moon gate or like this. Uh, people will go there, will feel, oh, it's, it's over, and then you go through there, we will see, oh, there is a big garden. It's full of surprise. Um, and also use those uh, frame, the garden, it's like a painting there. And uh, the very important thing is the plant in the garden. Uh, the plant will provide beauty and the texture and the meaning for a garden. <coughs> the Chinese garden can tell a variety of plants, uh, like the many trees and the flowers in there. Uh, the plants may, uh, like this. And uh, we, when we choose the plants, uh, it uh, will consider about the plant's habits, color, form, fragrance, and the textures. Uh, and also, every plant is carefully, carefully chosen by its beauty and some meaning because we have the plant culture. Mm. Because the plant will grow in the, dif uh, it will represent the different, uh, different scenarios in the different season. And uh, so you can see this is the uh, Beijing Botanic Garden. There have a lake. And uh, there's a different scenarios in different seasons. This is the spring, and the peach flower is very beautiful. And this is the summer, there are many lotus flowers. And the <coughs> autumn is very colorful. I think the spring and autumn in Beijing is uh, very, very beautiful. And this is the winter. So the uh, the plants is quite beautiful. Then sometimes the Chinese garden choose the different plant elements for their garden due to the fragrance. I think you do the same thing, you like the fragrance. And the Chinese garden always have the fragrance flowers to set the atmosphere. For example, uh, some Chinese garden have the lotus pond. And uh, nearby, there have a lot of pavilion. People can sit there to enjoy the good smell and uh, enjoy the beautiful flower. And there also have uh, other many fragrant plants in Chinese garden, uh, like this, plums, and uh, the peonias, sweet osmentus, or like the uh, magnolia, lilac, lily, Chinese rose or orchid. And uh, when we choose the uh, uh, plant, sound is another element of the Chinese garden. Like when it's raining or 
on Wendy, we can see the it will create a smoothing sound like this. And then you can see the sound is very make you make you peaceful. And the flowers and the trees also construct with the sharp and harsh architecture lines. So the plants can combine with the architectures. Like this. this is in the, uh, the Forbidden City, the pictures. And also about the plant culture. The Chinese garden uh, plants and the trees uh, have its history and uh, include some meanings in the garden. Mm, like this, the uh, palm tree, bamboo, and the plum. These three uh, plants in China is, has a good name. It's the three friend of the winter, Sui Han San Yu. Because in China, this, uh, this, uh, this three, three plants are stay green or blooming in the cold winter. People think it is represent them are uh, very uh, pride or honor or uh, very uh, people uh, in, in, in Asian China, people always painting it. And uh, the palm tree, palm tree is very important in Chinese garden. It represents the longevity and uh, struggle for survival because it will stay green in the cold winter. And the bamboo, bamboo is also will survive in the winter, and uh, it uh, also have the hollow skin. So people think in Chinese, uh, in Chinese is represent the modest, like a uh, gentleman. And the uh, the bamboo shoot, bamboo shoot. Uh, in Chinese, in China, people eat bamboo shoot, and. The, the bamboo is also uh, the favorite food for panda. <laughs> and about the plum blossom, uh, this, this kind of flower is very fav favorite in China. And uh, it is usually blooms in the, I think it's in the end of the winter <coughs> or in the early spring. It's quite cold, but it Blue. and uh, they are appreciated for their nobleness and the purity and the modest to encourage people to improve themselves. Mm. It also has the four gentlemen in Chinese plant uh, the culture, Mei Lan Du Ju Si Jun Zi, is the Mei uh, Su Su. Uh, Plum blossom, orchid, bamboo, and uh, chrysanthemums, and uh, with each of them, it also uh, represents the four seasons. About the orchid, uh, I I see in uh, in the tribes there are many orchids. Yes, and in China, people very like the orchid flower uh, because uh, it in represents the spring and uh, it have some good smell. Some orchid will have very good smells, and uh, the orchid always grow in China. It's always grow in the mountain and uh, or the deep valley. They are regarded as a noble and uh, the pure. In the culture, in the Chinese plant culture, and the, the crisis, uh, how to ah uh, yes, this this flower uh, in in Asian China, so the people very like this flower. Uh, in Tao Tao Yuan Ning, ah, since since the. Uh, in the ancient China, it was uh, regarded as the symbol of the hermit of this flower. 
and the, the pioneer, uh, tree pioneer, pioneer tree in, in China, is a king flower, king of flowers, because it is quite beautiful and flower is very big. Yeah, this is in Jingshan Park in Beijing. Uh, I just take the photo in the May. Uh, I think just in the uh, in the er, er, uh, the beginning of the May. It's quite beautiful. And the lotus, lotus flower is present in the figure form of represent elegance and beauty, and the purity and the grace. And uh, do you know the lotus flower, the root, can eat? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the seed, also the seed. Yes, yeah. the seed is also a medicine in China. Yes. And the mammoth. The mammoth flower is very beautiful. And it's regarded as a symbol of wealth. Uh, it always plant together with the magnolia, yunnan, uh, paonia, and uh, asmantus in the uh, royal garden. And now we can see it everywhere. It's very beautiful. Yeah, like this, in the summer palace. The summer palace. OK, and uh, <laughs> that's all. Thank you. Uh, if we, you have time, welcome to Beijing Botanic Garden and uh, welcome to Beijing <coughs> to see our traditional garden. Thank you. <laughs>
absolutely wonderful. Um, <laughs> I think you presented what they want to go with. There is no way I would have known how to do this unless I was shown it's like all like that. And, and now then, the question is, how to, can I remember how to close it? Oh, you've done this before. So what's the name of the